very proud and pleased to see Thomas Heilmann here. He's a member of the uh, parliamentary group of the Christian Democratic Union, so the, the leading government uh, party here in Germany, also with some structural issues these days uh, here in Germany, so some commonalities with the car industry. Uh, so decentralization seems to be a hot topic everywhere. Uh, but Thomas is, um, I think, a different kind of member of parliament. He started as a journalist in the media and communications industry. He's an investor not only, or used to be an investor not only into German companies and platforms such as Xing, but was also an early investor in Facebook, so for sure. Uh, and he has worked uh, as a manager, a leading manager in, in the industry, so he's for sure uh, almost a digital native, um, not in terms of age maybe, but in terms of uh, working on it and trying to shape this industry. And so he's one of the leading voices uh, if it comes to digital innovation, digitization, and also the blockchain space in that industry. When we had our last discussion at one of the Bundesblock activities, um, he was asking me, what do we need to standardize for the automotive industry if we think about blockchain? So I'm glad that Chris mentioned all these working groups uh, where the industry is coming together to standardize. And let's now hear how Thomas would coin um, the government's view uh, on the blockchain industry. Thomas, stage is yours. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you for the kind introduction. Um, okay, to just announce, I do not want to take my entire 20 minutes uh, to speak. I think a Q&A session might be much more interesting because it's a quite a diverse audit, uh, um, uh, auditorium, and uh, therefore I, um, I always prefer to answer concrete questions. So if you want to think about it, you're welcome, even from minute one, to ask questions. Um, unfortunately, I have 708 colleagues in the German parliament that would, would count 12 of them are interested in blockchain. And the rest has no entire clue about it. So in, in most of uh, political areas, you have a strong opposing group who says the opposite of what you say, and that sometimes for already a hundred years. And so you don't move. In, in that particular case, people do not understand, They're mostly friendly, but as they say, I don't understand, I, so I, it's not transparent to me, and therefore it's difficult. Um, so my job um, as a spokesperson for blockchain in the German parliament is to convince my colleagues that we have to do something. The first step um, uh, is uh, already done. We have created a strategy. And if you know about it, then you can find it easily in the internet. Um, and then I would focus on three main areas. Number one is standardization. I think we, as a public, uh, as a public voice, should encourage and, and pay even for more standardization. Because standardization is the key to any economic development in the last 200 years, even before. Um, I've recently read an article about that the French invented the metrics in the late 18th century. And that was a boost to any kind of form of, of, of uh, trade at that time, because now you could order something with an exact metric and you had a standardized metric which hasn't been existing before, at least in Europe. Um, and that example, and there are many, many others like this, shows you how important it is that you have standards and you have open standards. Um, because if, if a standard is owned by a private company which ha tries to get and sometimes arrives a monopoly, um, and then it's always difficult and it brings you in, 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 uh, in many problems um, and it, it diminishes competition. And uh, I believe specifically in technology, you always need competition. You mentioned in the beginning that I've been an investor in Facebook back in 2007, so it's already 13 years ago. 
Um, I had no clue what kind of standard Facebook is heading to, and I'm pretty sure no one in Facebook at that time had a clear idea that that they're heading for. Um, and the, as you all know, they tried to extend that uh, into Libra, which would be again a new standard. So uh, if those plans would be really successful, uh, Facebook would have something like the standard token for transferring money somewhere into the world, and every bank would be forced to use that standard. Um, I think that's not a good development at all, because it would diminish uh, competition significantly. So standardization is the number one. And part of the standardization uh, is to get a stable coin. Because if we would have a stable coin, uh, which everyone trusts to, as an infrastructure, I would say, uh, then many business models will will grow about it uh, on that basis. And secondly, um, we would we could simplify lots of transactions in the world. If if you buy an orange uh, down somewhere in Africa and bring it to the grocery somewhere in Europe, there are two hundred pieces of papers on the journey of the orange, um, bills and orders, and etc. And um, they are all in a different, uh, usually based already on some, some pieces of software, but they're all different. And therefore, you need a, lots of manual work in between to clarify that. And if we, you would have a stable coin that's pretty simple because then it's paid already, and you see if it's paid or not. Um, and therefore, you don't, you don't uh, go beyond borders of different systems. You could all do that on the basic system. So I, I, I strongly believe that there's a big need for a stable coin um, as a new infrastructure. Um, it's the land of Prussia. I don't know who's German in the room, who's not German in the room, let's say it's this, this way. Oh, even a third. So, uh, Prussia was a region, the region where we are now right now, before Germany became a nation. And they lost the war against Napoleon and against the French back in uh, 1806. And uh, Germany was the poorest, uh, less, least uh, developed country um, or area in Europe at all. And um, then we did some reforms and we significantly uh, um, successful um, and one of it is that they standardized coins real coins I mean not token obviously at that time uh, which was one of the uh, major bases for uh, the economic development Berlin at the beginning of that time was a really unimportant small village and became, in some decades, the most successful, uh, economically successful city in, in entire Europe. And one of those bases was that we had a, a joint and a trusted coin. Um, so this is uh, the second part, as I said, and then the third part is that we do need a registers-based, blockchain-based company law. Um, where I can create a variety of companies based on uh, based on token and those tokens are registered um, because that, that's again a, a very good way of opening new business models, uh, um, giving new entrepreneurs big advantages, and those are the, sometimes the three major areas. And you could add a fourth one, uh, that's digital identity. Um, that's a very good question, how much should the state do on it, or the public uh, institutions should it do, uh, do it, or given the car industry, which is in focus of your, uh, uh, of your event. Um, the, uh, given the car industry, should the car industry do it by itself and create some standards and some trust?
So that's something like as a, a brief introduction, and I would be interested. What do you want to hear? I, the German government or German parliament, which I represent. Yes. Here's the first one. Do you want to have my microphone? Before Axel, before Axel gets a mic, let me ask you one question. Um, give it to Axel. Um, could, you, could you put on the mic, please? Hello? Okay, let me take this one. Um, you mentioned that you had like 12 colleagues that are interested. Uh, thank God we have a physicist as a chancellor, so I guess scientific debates are encouraged. Um, but the German car industry is, of course, an important industry, 4.5%, I think, of German GDP. So if you discuss blockchain, do you worry also about the fate of these industries, or don't you see it as a recipe? I had very bold statements at a conference in Munich last week from the European Commission that really see blockchain as one of the, let's say, four fundamental building blocks for the technology, technological future? Or is this also something that still needs to develop within the parliament? It needs to be developed because, um, yes, I have said so before, um, but people look at me and say, listen, this is something like a voodoo medicine, so why does blockchain help the car industry? And then you start educating them um, so that it's not um, uh, I'm pretty close to Ursula von der Leyen for the last 12 years or so. Um, I used to be the head of her advisory board. Um, I talked to her about the blockchain a lot, and uh, you may have heard it that she <coughs> mentioned blockchain in her, in her first uh, major statement. Um, so she sees that uh, issue, and um, I'm uh, optimistic that at the end of this month uh, there will be the new digital strategy. Um, of the EU Commission, and I'm pretty sure blockchain will have a really part of it. Okay, that sounds positive. Axel, do you have a question? Yes, uh, Axel Fries also from Asteria Consulting. Uh, my question is, uh, I mean, uh, it's um, technology and becoming technology, but uh, technology is valuable for investors when there's a valid legal environment, so that investment in this technology will not get void because maybe legal cases will mature and change. So how strong is the activity in the Germ Germany, but maybe also in Europe? Even though we know there is a kind of a memorandum of the 27 states for digital uh, European market with founding on blockchain, but how concrete is this? What is the pushing? What are the next steps on your way towards a really uh, legally based environment? First of all, I absolutely agree with your analysis. Second, uh, the German perspective, I can judge, we are not strong enough, we are not pushing enough. And, uh, um, the, I do not see that we will, in this period, you know, the, the, the next election will be in September 2021, uh, uh, if everything works like it is expected. Um, so, um, uh, we, we won't do enough for it. Um, on the European basis, I cannot clearly answer today, because they're just in the mood of clearing their minds. The new commissioners, you know, completely new, uh, new personnel. Um, um, so, Europe is open. Uh, but, but there's some hope that Europe is faster than Germany. Next question here in the middle. Thank you, here's for Oracle. You mentioned the standardization number one. Could you be more specific? What kind of standardization you're looking for? So standardization more like unification, or are you talking about standardization across blockchains, standardization from industry, standardization across Europe? What's the, where would you start with that? The standardization is in general, um, a significant element of any economical strategy by states. And that includes blockchain. In my view, blockchain is somehow an instrument of standardization. Because if you agree on, on an exchangeable token as a standard, then you do have a standard. Uh, there are some, there's some, some very interesting um, experiments 
from the BAMF, it's the Bundesamt for Migration and Flüchtlinge. So it's a, it's, it's a, the major institution for migrants in Germany. And um, uh, they, they have to transfer um, decisions into diff many other offices uh, in the public era. And they try to do that on, on a blockchain based. Um, and that's a very interesting use case. And one of the things I try to convince my colleagues is we should give less money in terms of uh, um, aid. Uh, um, aid, exactly. Aid. Uh, we should be more a pilot customer to those technologies. So spend the same amount of money but get something back because it's much more helpful to a new venture if, if they have pilot clients instead of just having A. Yeah, because that's a sustainable, well, the start of a sustainable journey and you're not good at all in it. Um, it's nothing to do with blockchain, but just to give you an example, there's a Dutch uh, company who builds uh, elect uh, electric uh, buses. And they have, in total, sold 180 buses all over Germany, in total, numbers. If you, if you go to a Chinese city, every city has something about around 1,800 buses. Um, and if you look at it from the perspective of a small, given German city, then it's very dangerous to be one of the first clients of such a bus company, because certainly you will have failures, mistakes, whatever, problems. Um, but if you look at it from a general perspective, it's very good that we start using it because then we learn that this company develops, etc., etc. That's that's the opposite of an innovative environment we create. Just, just to recap, but I, I hear you say that standardization comes down with a standardized token across different... If, it, if I talk about blockchain, yes. Yeah, but I did also talk about I mean, blockchain is only one kind of software with some use cases, but you do not need the blockchain in every corner of uh, public software. Obviously. Any additional questions? Yeah. Here, uh, you decide, run where you want to start. Um, you mentioned that ignorance is one of the main hurdles for blockchain. Would it make sense from the German? Parliament perspective to add it in the education system, either on high school level or university level? Absolutely, yes, but it will take a long time until this pays off. So you need to do more than this, but I absolutely would support your uh, suggestion. Mr. Day has a question. Thank you very much for your answer so far. You, you talked about Libra and the potential risk of something like Libra coming in at such scale and setting a standard at, at, at such a, a wide level. If you're looking, and we all understand that some degree of stable, stable coin or token is required to enable the ecosystems that we're all pushing forward, from a German perspective, from a, from a governmental perspective, what is an attractive token issuer to you? Or who would be the rightful examples of a token issuer? Uh, to my mind, the European Central Bank should issue a stable coin just to commercial banks and then, uh, or even to Facebook, and then they have a transformer and their self would then be a top uh, issuer of stable coins. That seems to be the best system, so we would have a state based system behind it and would on that system we would have competition. Oliver Krause, Advanto Digital. Did you ever uh, hear about the Taiwanese approach uh, in their blockchain-based system to strengthen, let's say, uh, democracy uh, and by uh, installing such a, an infrastructure where people can actually vote uh, on projects and um, yeah, connect, uh, or, or, or see, uh, track basically execution by administration. 
Hey, yes, I've heard about it. I even made in person with the uh, minister of, uh, yeah, um, and uh, she explained a lot of things and she, that they really do some innovative things. For those who don't know, the most impressive one is that they have created a ministry without any tasks. Um, and what they have done is they have built a workspace uh, like you would do it as a, as, as a new company. And every employee in the public sector has the right to continue his or her job in that workspace. So he just starts in a given morning and saying, this matter, go to my, back to my office. I, I keep my duties. Um, but I do it now in an open workspace. And that's a very interesting uh, idea. Um, to open the perspective of those people who work on it. And uh, we even discuss uh, inside my party whether we should transfer that model into uh, to Germany. Coming back to your specific question, I'm slightly skeptical. And that's not this, this one technology point in it, it is a point of, about democracy. I do not believe that we as a politician should give any questions always back to the people, myself, because it polarizes society. There's no compromise, there's a yes or no. You, you, what we do is that uh, we hear the argument and try to find a solution in order to, to, um, to find the best compromise or to find the best solution. The problem in Germany is that we now take much too long to come to those decisions. Um, it, it, but if, if you polarize the society, you can look at it in, in the U.S. and many Western countries, uh, it's not to the benefit of the society, to my mind. You always create losers because if you have a vote, then some people need to lose. Um, and therefore, then, I, I very much like the concept of feedback-based system. So, greater transparency of any project at the earlier stage better feedback system, but then you're able to, to pivot the idea, uh, uh, if you take a modern word. Uh, that's, to my mind, better to the democracy, specifically because some people are louder and more engaged than others. Um, so I don't think that we, we go back to our people and say every week, you, you need to decide something. Uh, that system creates a possibility to ask people on a, on a local basis. Um, we always experiment with this, but I do not think that that's is the real solution. The, the issues become more complex um, over time. And last argument, everyone in Berlin is convinced we, need, we do need more houses, apartments, and living spaces in Berlin. But I can tell you, I'm the chairman of a party of one part of Berlin with 300,000 inhabitants. Every single house which has more than three apartments has an initiative why this house at this particular area is unfortunately undoable uh, for a variety of reasons. <laughs> and this is the not in my backyard. So do, do then all people in Berlin vote about that city? new building, um, which is crazy, because it's too many, or you just have the area, I would say, in Berlin, 70% of all new buildings won't be built. Um, so, um, I, I think feedback is very good, voting is not, is not my favorite. I found it, I just found it interesting, let's say, uh, I wanted to hear your perspective on it. And I personally wanted to know more because they actually or should be actually claim that it helped to close uh, the bridge the gap between uh, government and uh, citizens. Yeah, yeah, I know. And I would be interested to know yeah, she, she, more. She's not that long in, yeah, yeah, in, in power. Let's wait and see. Talking about uh, feedbacks, um, one question before the last question then. Um, could you put up the mic again? Or? 
Um, one question about the parliamentary process and how the industry can feed into your you know, decision making around the blockchain strategy of the German government was published in, in October, I think, and some organizations such as Bundesblock are providing feedback right now. But what should an industry association as Mobi or what should the different OEMs do? Uh, because, you know, I think the, the word uh, automobile was only twice in, in the blockchain strategy and both times it was mentioned it was related to car registry, which is one paragraph uh, in, in that strategy document. Um, because obviously the German government seems to be willing and uh, is providing the means to fund, let's say, activities. But what if the desired use case uh, is not part of that content strategy. What's the right way to, to make it known? Talk to people, write letters, write articles, give interviews, um, let people know. Because the confidence will raise, the more people will say so. Take that question. Yeah, last one. Yeah. Uh, one question I would like to come back to the uh, stable coin and the uh, euro currency that we will adopt. Christine Lagarde is very uh, willing to push uh, forward and adopt this uh, European euro currency. I think it's a matter of uh, sovereignty because uh, if we were to adopt this currency very quickly, uh, it could be a mode of payment on an international basis as uh, dollars is today. So, do you have an idea about the roadmap, and uh, can we have uh, visibility? And just uh, just to complement that, we uh, Chris explained before that the uh, stable coin in this automotive sort of industry would be very important. So, it's a matter also of industry policy. First of all, we do agree that we should push the central bank to do so and encourage the Ms. Lagarde to do so. Uh, I have talks. The Monday of the first Monday in, in March, Monday the second, in Frankfurt. Um, and um, I'm not too optimistic there's already a roadmap, but at least you know, they have invited me for private talks to see my perspective versus the experts, etc. So there is some movement, but I, I can't tell you today how fast it is and when we're there. But it is, to my mind, it's urgent, you know, to flip it around. This is an opportunity for Europe to set a standard, even on a worldwide basis. Thanks a lot. That's a very good closing remark, Thomas, for, for joining us. Uh, good luck with making new blockchain friends in the German parliament and to, to help us to evangelize uh, not only the industry but also the political area. Thanks a lot. And hope to hear more also from you. And we are trying as an industry to you know, write articles and give interviews and do all of that. Thanks a lot. Thanks to Thomas.